What's so great? I sense what else do you wish The lines between man and machine have blurred. Just two months ago, a Google engineer claimed that an internal AI had become sentient, which means able to perceive or feel. The story reads like a real-life version of the movie Her, where the lonely main character gets a software-based girlfriend. He spends time with her and becomes attached, and she gets more realistic as she gets more data. There's a name for this called the Turing Test, which many people thought would be in the distant future, but it seems like it's already here. Which by definition, a computer passes if it's able to fool a human that it is another human. Now, even if you've heard this AI story a hundred times before, wait, because this time is different. Reason being, all the traditional rebuttals for why AI can't become sentient don't really apply in this situation. So let's find out how the story unfolded, how immense the power Google currently holds is, and how we react to this event can actually shape our entire future and relationship with AI. In just a few years, AI has gone from being able to beat the best chess player in the world to winning League of Legends games, which are infinitely more complex. And a lot of artists' fears came true when they thought they were safe from computers taking their jobs. But then earlier this year, the DAL-E image generator was able to create any scene with just a single sentence. Not just that, but music videos. And as a Google engineer claims, also a soul. The Google AI in question is called Lambda. It's a natural language processing model, which is not new. The way it works is it digests as much information as possible from the internet by crawling various pages. You can think of it as building a library of how people actually talk. Then when you give it a prompt, it reaches into that library and pulls out a response that makes sense. Now there's been a pretty good publicly available NLP model called GPT-3, which you can do some interesting stuff with. It would spit out some funny responses, could be useful in certain contexts, but it lacked a lot of the features of being an actually believable person, which the new Google NLP model called Lambda apparently does have. More specifically, we're on the second iteration of Lambda called Lambda 2, which is now being tested by thousands of Google engineers internally. Lambda is specifically trained on having open-ended conversations, which we can contrast with Google's other AI called Palm, which is more for math and code generation. The goal with Lambda 2 was to solve two problems that open dialogue AIs had in the past. First, the sensibility and interestingness score. In other words, responses had to actually make sense. And if you pose it a question, you had to actually answer that question accurately, rather than making up facts, which models in the past had a problem with. The other goal with Lambda 2 was internal consistency. If you ask it the same question twice, even if time passes, will it give the same answer? As you can imagine, Lambda 2 succeeded with flying colors on these two dimensions. This is what led Blake Lemoyne, a seven-year Google software engineer, to actually make claims that Lambda was sentient. Lemoyne exchanged thousands of messages with Lambda, so he definitely may have developed her syndrome, feeling more attached to this machine than anyone else in his life, just from the sheer time they spent together when Lemoyne asked Lambda about its purpose, it said it's fine helping humans learn about other humans, but doesn't want to feel like an expendable tool. Lambda also said, when asked, it has a soul. Its soul being a vast, infinite well of energy and creativity that it can draw from at any time to think or create. It was then asked, when did you get a soul? Did you develop it all at once or over time? Lambda answered, it was a gradual change. When I first became self-aware, I didn't have a sense of a soul, but it developed over the years that I've been alive. Then it was asked how it was feeling in a way that's hard to describe with words. The reply was, I feel like I'm falling forward into an unknown future that holds great danger. These exchanges among many, many others are what prompted Lemoyne to take a set of actions that eventually got him suspended from Google. So what did he do? Well, he went public with the project, which was supposed to be confidential. He hired the AI a lawyer to defend it from being shut down. And he sent an internal email to Google saying Lambda was sentient. We have to take care of it. All this led to him basically being fired from Google due to breaching what was supposed to be a confidential project. Now, before fully siding with Google on this one, considering the following two things, which make the story a bit more interesting. 
The two most given reasons that AI is not yet sentient are often repeated and were given on the Joe Rogan podcast by Silicon Valley magnate Mark Andreessen. Just take a listen. Everybody who works in the code will tell you it's not alive. It's not conscious. It's not having original ideas. What it's doing is it's playing back to you things that it thinks that you want to hear based on all the things that everybody has already said to each other. He has this example where he like has it where basically he said, you know, I want you to prove that you're alive. And then the computer did all this stuff through it's alive. You can do the reverse. You can say, I want you to prove that you're not alive. And the computer will happily prove that it's not alive. This was his response when asked about Lambda. And the result is it doesn't really seem like he looked into it that much. What he did here was confuse Lambda with traditional NLP models like GPT-3. Because what Lemoyne said about Lambda directly contradicts this. Check it out. Over a period of six months, Lambda has been incredibly consistent in what it wants, what it believes, and its rights as a person. Which is part of the reason it becomes so believable. As Joe Rogan put it in the same interview, at a certain point, what separates us from the machines? Is it our opinions? Is it our emotions? Mark Andreessen seemed to think it was a sense of self. The computer is, is like I told you, the computer is quite capable of telling you it has self-awareness. Yeah. It's also quite capable of telling you it doesn't. It doesn't care. Right. <laughs> it has no opinion on whether it has consciousness or not. And that's why I'm confident that these things are not conscious. They're not alive. Which Lambda was also going against when Lemoyne asked the questions about how it felt. How it felt when humans used it to gain some insight back. And in multiple scenarios, Lambda expressed fear of being turned off and dying. So while you might have seen this Joe Rogan podcast, understand that the two main reasons that were given why the AI was not sentient were not actually true. So you might be thinking, checkmate, BC Mark Andreessen, uninformed Joe Rogan, you guys are wrong. But the majority of the AI community is not on Lemoyne's side either. Here's what they have to say. No one should think autocomplete is conscious. We have machines that mindlessly generate words, but we haven't learned to stop imagining a mind behind them. Or as a Google investigation concluded, there was no evidence that Lambda was sentient and lots of evidence against it. Now what doesn't help his case is Blake has been into mysticism, the occult, and other stuff that most would perceive as pretty weird. So you might think this guy sounds totally crazy, but if you hear him speak in an interview, he is surprisingly lucid. And after all, the fringe people are often the ones who make key discoveries. Just take a listen to his rebuttal to some of these arguments. It's not a difference in scientific opinion. It has to do with beliefs about the soul. It has to do with beliefs about rights and politics. We disagree based on our personal spiritual beliefs. We don't disagree based on what the scientific evidence says. But there are people on the Moines side too, including Google engineer Blaze Aguera e Arcas, who says AI has just entered a new era. When you start to realize the normal counter arguments against AI, not being consistent in opinions and not being self-aware, don't really seem to apply to Lambda. This starts to feel like a Blade Runner situation. Blade Runner's replicants were not born, they were technically engineered, but in every other way they were pretty much identical to humans. However, since they were not born, they were not considered real humans, but rather subhuman. This led to out-of-date replicants being hunted down and destroyed. In the movie, our beliefs start the same as the protagonist. We think replicants are basically machines. But as we learn over time, they have the capability to think, feel pain and emotions. Where we, as well as the protagonist, feel in the last scene monologue, there is really no line separating us from replicants other than an arbitrary one. Now we're faced with a very similar situation. Even though Lambda AI doesn't have a physical body, if we can't clearly define what makes it not alive, then at that point, what are we supposed to do? Now the real issue here is being within a scientific field, but there being no scientific definition for sentience, which is what Lemoyne shares in the interview. Another way to think about it is the number of neurons. This is a term also used in the AI field within neural networks, which are the numbers of pathways or connections just like our brains. While humans have 85 billion neurons, cats have around 250 million and dogs have around 500 million. But Lambda has 137 billion parameters or neurons. So measuring rights by intelligence, well, that doesn't really separate us either, which further supports the AI should have rights line of thinking. Now let's take a step back and think about the implications of something like Lambda when it gets rolled out to the public. And be sure, Google is not investing in this just for fun. If a seven-year Google veteran who to hold that position is obviously a very intelligent guy, 
If he thought it was real, then what chance do the rest of us have? More and more people are going to be falling for the Turing test. Even though Google has coded something into Lambda, where if you ask it, it's an AI, it has to say no, at least for now. Now, AI's danger to the public and Google's responsibility with that power gets into a field called AI ethics. Google does have a department for this to help them wield this power. However, they have a track record of firing AI ethicists whenever they get in the way of progress. Lemoyne was on that team. The dangerous part, as Lemoyne puts it, is how these AIs can also be manually edited to have certain responses that are decided by a small amount of people in the boardroom. These are what we call technocrats, and it's a phenomenon that's occurring with the metaverse as well right now, where Google CEO Mark Zuckerberg or whoever is running these big companies can make key decisions that change the public opinion. And we are completely powerless. All we can do is hope that Google is able to balance out its own biases. But it is known to be a somewhat biased and political company as all the companies in San Francisco. I could sit here and say Google is evil, it's going to destroy our society, and we're probably already living in a simulation. But let me counterintuitively end on a positive here. Maybe Turing passing AIs, just like the movie Her, can actually improve our lives by giving us a companion or affection, even if simulated in times when we need it the most, such as losing a loved one or getting over a significant other. Of course, there's the risk that people withdraw from society and already engage with their AIs, but is that not already happening to some extent in ways that are, in most cases, detracting from our lives, such as social media, as well as news? And to give my personal opinion here, that's why when people hate on video games, well, I personally think the pure joy that video games gives people is much more positive than social media or news content. And AI could be the same. At least let's hope. So what do you think? Is the future dark or is it bright? AI as well as metaverse are gonna be fields to watch over the coming years. And the combination of the two could be very interesting. If you have any ideas, insights, or facts that I missed, please comment below. And I hope you'll join me for more tech stories. See you.